why U.S. submarines don't surface for months, and what happens inside. Beneath the surface of the world's oceans, in darkness so absolute that not even light dares to reach, something stirs. It moves with purpose, silent and gliding through the crushing depths of the sea. Unseen, unheard, and yet impossibly powerful. It could be anywhere, off the coast of Europe, beneath Arctic ice, lurking near the Strait of Hormuz. And unless it wants to be found, no one will ever know it was there. This is a U.S. Navy ballistic missile submarine. A steel leviathan designed to vanish into the ocean for months at a time. Without surfacing, without contact, without a single trace. These submarines can operate submerged for 70, 80, even 100 days. To the outside world, they effectively disappear. And that's the point. Strategically, these submarines are one of the United States' most critical assets. They're known as part of the nuclear triad, the third pillar, alongside land-based ICBMs and aerial bombers. But unlike the other two, submarines offer something unique. They are mobile, untouchable, and above all, undetectable. Their greatest weapon isn't just the missiles they carry. It's their invisibility. Disappearing for months isn't just a flex of endurance. It's a calculated military necessity. In a world where adversaries are constantly improving missile technology, satellites hover in geosynchronous orbit and war games play out on digital battlefields, submarines remain the ultimate ace in the hole. Their job is simple but profound survive the first strike. If land bases are wiped out and bombers can't get airborne, submarines are the last to respond. And when they do, they can end a war before it even begins. That's why they must surface. Not to check the weather. Not to stretch. Not to wave the flag. They submerge and vanish. For months. Technically, it's a feat of extraordinary engineering. The Ohio-class ballistic missile submarine, for example, is nearly two football fields long. 560 feet of reinforced steel. It's powered by a nuclear reactor, which means it doesn't need fuel. The reactor can power the sub for over 25 years without ever being refueled. It produces the electricity needed to run everything, propulsion, life support, computers, navigation, even the oxygen generation systems. The only limitation, human beings. More specifically, food. Each submarine carries enough food to support a crew of around 150 men for three months. Everything from fresh produce to powdered eggs, carefully rationed and stored in every spare crevice, even under the floorboards. Once the food starts running low, the mission ends. Not because the sub couldn't keep going, but because the people inside can't go without calories. Inside the submarine is a maze of tight corridors, low ceilings, and humming machinery. There's no sunlight, no fresh air, no windows. You live under artificial lighting, eat on a six-hour rotation schedule, and sleep in hot bunks, where three sailors share two beds in shifts. Privacy is almost non-existent. The walls are steel, the pressure is relentless, and yet, it works. What happens inside a U.S. submarine during these long, hidden patrols is a masterclass in discipline, coordination, and mental endurance. From the moment the hatch is sealed and the dive begins, every sailor aboard becomes part of a tightly woven organism. Every role is vital. There are no passengers. You have nuclear engineers monitoring the reactor 24 7 Sonar technicians listening for the faintest noise in the ocean. Navigators constantly tracking their position without GPS, because satellites don't reach underwater. And of course, weapons officers in charge of the submarine's deadliest cargo. Up to 20 Trident 2D5 nuclear missiles, each capable of reaching targets more than 7,000 miles away with terrifying accuracy. The responsibility is immense, and it's carried in silence. The radio room is manned, but there is no regular communication with the outside world. Submarines operate under a doctrine known as Emissions Control, or MCON, meaning they emit virtually nothing. No signals, no transmissions, no pings that could give away their position. They only receive, never transmit, and even then, it's tightly controlled. If a message is sent from command, it's encoded, brief, and received on an ultra-low frequency antenna trailing behind the sub like a whisper on a thread. In extreme cases, submarines rely on something called the Emergency Action Message. If this comes through with a series of coded instructions, the crew may learn that the unthinkable has happened. A nuclear attack is underway. In that moment, their mission changes. They become the retaliatory hand of the nation. Silent, swift, final. But most patrols don't come to that. Most are long stretches of eerie calm. Sailors read, exercise, write letters that won't be sent until they surface weeks later. There's a small gym, a library of DVEs, and a chaplain. Holidays are celebrated quietly. Birthdays marked with a cupcake in the mess hall. Time blurs. Days and nights cease to exist in a world lit by fluorescent bulbs and driven by shifts. The psychological strain is real. You're sealed in a tube of metal, 
hundreds of feet below the surface, surrounded by crushing water pressure and the constant knowledge that your sub is both your shield and your coffin. If anything goes wrong, a fire, a leak, a reactor failure, rescue is unlikely. The crew trains constantly for those moments. Drills are relentless. Fire suppression, flooding control, emergency surfacing. They prepare for every nightmare because one mistake, one spark in the wrong place could cost the lives of everyone aboard. Yet it is this very environment, claustrophobic, extreme, and exacting, that forges some of the Navy's most elite sailors. Some Mariners are a breed apart. They volunteer for this life. They endure months without sunlight, without family, without normalcy, all to keep the strategic balance intact. They are the silent guardians of the deterrent strategy, the invisible line between peace and devastation. Strategically, the reason the U.S. can afford to project power with such global reach is because submarines like these exist. Every potential adversary knows that somewhere, undetected, a submarine is out there, ready to strike back. This guaranteed second strike capability is the cornerstone of nuclear deterrence. It ensures that no rational enemy would ever consider a first strike, because the retaliation would be unstoppable. Even the act of surfacing at the end of a patrol is a carefully orchestrated procedure. Before breaking the waves, the submarine will scan for threats, deploy periscopes, check sonar for signs of enemy vessels. When it finally surfaces, it's not dramatic, just a long, slow rise and the hatch easing open. Fresh air floods in, the crew, pale and quiet, climbs out one by one. Mission complete. And yet, in that silence, the world may never know where they went, what they saw, what they listened to, or how close the world came to catastrophe. Every patrol is logged, every movement measured, every moment below the sea recorded in the minds of those aboard. They bring back more than data. They bring back peace, a peace that was never broken, in part because they were there to ensure it wouldn't be. Modern submarines are continuing to evolve. The next generation, the Columbia class, is already under construction. Bigger, quieter, deadlier. These submarines will carry the legacy forward into the next half century, continuing the tradition of silent vigilance beneath the ocean's waves. But nothing changes the essence of the mission to vanish, to remain undetected, to operate for months at a time in total isolation, and to do so with the knowledge that, should the day come, they are the final line between civilization and oblivion. It's easy to forget that they're out there, that beneath your vacation crews, below the tankers and shipping lanes, under ice caps and coral reefs, a quiet watchers glide. They don't broadcast their presence, they don't appear on the evening news, and yet every day they carry the weight of global stability in their steel hulls. They don't surface for months, and when they do, the world is exactly the way they left it, peaceful, because they were there, unseen, unheard, and always ready.